Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your host, Calder Ness. This episode, we're chatting about some pretty cool next phase spoilers, as well as the newest upcoming DC set in 2025. This is episode 506. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks help. I have the high ground. Oh yeah, you may have the high ground. It's over, Simeon. Yeah. Instant deadpan. How do six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny? I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fool. Simeon will be able to make that out. That's cool because it's expensive. I'm going to make hero clips like that for everyone. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Mileage for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, D-I-A-L-5, for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. It does stack with your normal Cool Stuff Inc. discount. As well as you can go to shop.wizkids.com. Use code DIAL H10, D-I-A-L-H, as in Henry, 10 for 10% off your order. It uh, does not work with Iconics, pre-orders, special promos, stuff like that, but normal, old, whatever, in-stock items, 10% off. You're welcome. Also, check out the Clicks by the Crate Dial H Collection, huh? Ooh. What? Sale. And that is straight up 55% off a case of War of the Realms or the old school Disney Plus set or a combination of one brick, one brick of Disney Plus and War of the Realms. Get you some Silver Age goodness over on shop.wizkids.com. At hero dot slash. Yeah. Hey, what's up, Simeon? How's it going? I'm joined by Simeon in the studio. What's up, man? Yeah, it's going, you know. Right on. What, uh, what made you happy this week, my man? Ooh. What made me happy this week was actually uh, the live stream that we did. The little right War on. of the Realms brick unboxing. It's been a while since we've done a brick unboxing like in a like, it has. form like that, hasn't it? Yeah, we did next phase in a different way than we normally would have, and so yeah, it's been, geez, like Wheels of Vengeance. Did we even? I don't. I don't remember. I assume we, we did, did do. We did do a Wheels of Vengeance like case unboxing, brick unboxing. We did the weird one at the store, which was us just getting four boosters each, which we got destroyed in. Uh, right. And then we did the brick unboxing. You, Ian, and myself, the for insane pulls. biggest Dracula yeah. fan. The, yeah, that would have been the last one we did. So it's been like that was October, like yeah. late October. Man, it's been so long since we've done an actual classic Burke unboxing. You're right. Oh yeah, my it, was, God. it was genuinely huh. fun, and especially like Disney Plus because I'm so far removed from Disney Plus, keeping up with like the the newest, hottest hero clicks uh, <laughs> and singles in my area, like that kind of thing. I'm so far huh. removed from Disney Plus that um, I was genuinely like surprised again, you know, seeing like certain figures and like I was like, oh, I remember this character, but what exactly they like? I remember Darcy Lewis; she's made quite a few teams that I've made, uh, but I was like, what exactly does she? Oh, that's right, Perplex Outwit, super cheap point cost, really solid like little figure, um, and just going through like that that single booster alone was really interesting, and seeing how well it. Uh, Oh yeah, meshed with the new next phase was really fun as well, um, and then the, yeah, that game the game did not <laughs> didn't Ooh, go my way. If you uh, if you haven't seen it, um, I don't know if they will have seen it yet. It yeah. might be up Monday or Tuesday. We're yeah. recording this Sunday night, so who knows when it'll be up? We'll we'll see, but I don't think it'll be a big spoiler alert once they see uh, the start of like turn two. Things start to go heavily, not in my favor. But uh, other Started than like strong, that, though. it was Started a really strong. fun game. And it was. At, at no point did I truly like think I was done. Like even in like the last moments, I was like, "Flurry four damage seems pretty yeah. good. Seems pretty That's good." Right. That's right. But yeah, that that made me happy. That was a fun day. It was. That was a ton of fun. I like that. Uh, what made me happy this week might make other people mad. But I can confidently say that I enjoyed Madam Web as a theater experience much more than I enjoyed the Spider-Verse movie last year. Hold on. Let me cook. Let me cook. Let me cook. Let me cook. Uh, Spider-Verse, I think it's just all about expectations. I think going into a movie with little to no expectations, being like, it's going to be horrible. And then being like, oh, wait, I'm 
actually kind of interested in the plot. And I actually kind of care if the main characters live or die. What the heck? And then I kind of leave the movie going, okay, there was goofy parts. And the writing was obviously bad. But I had a good time. That was like a fine movie. And I think it also helps that this is like Madam Web versus if this was like a Serpent Society movie or any Captain America relation or something, I'm sure I would be mad. I mean, probably. But being like characters that I know from the 90s Spider-Man cartoon and not that attached to it, I had such a fun time. Like, Madam Web, I I can really say, people are going to be like, you're insane. I told Ian this, and he was like, you are actually insane. But he hasn't seen it. I have. And I was expecting Morbius. I was expecting Morbius levels of just, wow, the main character's goofy. The villain is goofy. I like Morbius. I wanted him to be a cool vampire. He's weird. I hate the ear thing that he does. That's disgusting to look at. Versus Madam Web is just like, the way they do her premonitions, her visions, whatever is actually really cool. I I like really enjoy, I really enjoyed Madam Web, honestly. It gets super goofy toward the end and I think you could fix the ending with something and Dakota Johnson's acting is great throughout the movie and then there comes a point where she just hard switches to like old lady Madam Web style of acting and I'm like this feels way out of nowhere. But I, I don't know. I really liked. I feel like that's relatively spoiler free. But anyways, I had a great time watching Madam Web. I, I really genuinely did, and that made me happy this week. I just I had a blast. It was Madam Web in time, and I was on the edge of my seat for, for parts. I wouldn't say on the edge edge of my seat, but uh, you know, at some points I was like, oh, what's going to happen? Mean, some movies don't know. have to be great. I don't think. No. I think too many people have really high expectations for the MCU right now. Right. And that's fair because, you know, we had Endgame. We had we had that like right. huge build up, and then we had Endgame. So like, there's reasons to have expectations that are kind of like out of proportion. But yeah, I do like, think that at the end of the day, it is safe to remember that sometimes a movie can just be kind of dumb and fun. Doesn't have to be like I. I'm one of the people that like I'll rewatch Morbius because is it really bad? Yes. But is it like there's a lot of dumb fun parts? There's like a lot of like fun effects and like interesting dumb stuff where I'm like, I don't really think this is a good movie. I wish they did it better. Right. But I can still enjoy it. Like uh, the Hellboy reboot without Ron Perlman. Mm. Don't like I, it. But I really so that movie, that movie continued the trend of me watching movies that I absolutely hate or movies that are just straight up bad on my birthday. My <laughs> my 21st birthday, my brother and I are like, let's go see the Hellboy movie because we both like the Ron Perlman ones. And then the David Harbour one, we were just like, wow, this is horrible. I I hated this. But it's like it's not good as far as like a Hellboy movie, but it's like dad, fun. it's dad, like you have a fun time watching it. Right. Dad, what do I do, dad? <laughs> you're me you're me it's like okay hell boy we get it um but it was a fun time like the end battle with like the ghosts and stuff i will the ghost effect was terrifying the coming out of people's mouths oh, in yeah. that movie oh but yeah it the could be a fun the giants time. like the there's there's fun scenes it's not like a a movie that you know obviously we're not gonna like compare this to like something Scorsese's done or something like right. that. This Killers is the Flower Moon. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> this is uh, specifically for just like dumb brain bubblegum enjoyment yeah. kind of thing. You know, you uh, get to shut off your brain, let it chew bubblegum for a little while, and just like process this and just this nice yeah. flavor. It's not a just have a good. It's time. Not the world's best flavor, but it is a flavor that you get to enjoy. So I honestly, I encourage the listener, they don't have to. You don't have to waste your $12, $15 because I told you to. Maybe go see it on a Tuesday night, $5 night. But uh, go see Madam Web. I honestly, you know, don't buy into all the hate. You know, the haters are going to hate. But if you just kind of just want to have a good time and just kind of go in with the expectations that it's probably not going to be an amazing life-changing experience, but it might just be a fun romp through this alternate universe of the characters... And yeah, just go in with like a kind of a fun mindset, get some popcorn or sneak st- snacks in. I don't I don't care. Whatever. You know, just kind of have fun cuz I don't know. I enjoyed it. I had a great time. Wow. Encouraging yeah. people to commit a felony by sneaking Oh, snacks. maybe I shouldn't say that. I will say felony. this. I will say this. <laughs> I've never actually snuck snacks into the movie theater and 
I usually don't buy any snacks at a movie theater, literally ever, unless I'm like, I'm not going to have dinner tonight. I'll eat popcorn, which is, I don't recommend doing that. Uh, I don't recommend doing that, but it is fun sometimes. Um, Don't sneak in snacks. I actually am really against that. And I got in a lot of arguments throughout high school with friends or other people I knew that would like sneak in like a ridiculous amount of food. And I'm like, can we just eat later? We don't have to eat during the movie, you know, plan it better. Just, yeah, eat let's before, eat before, eat, later. eat yeah. after. Yeah, like, don't don't bring in a granola bar, you know, all this whatever stuff into the movie theater. Because actually, a lot of places, I'm not going to get in a rant, but a lot of places, like, make most of their money off concessions. Yeah. Not actually from them a, a ton of money to basically rent those movies to, like, show yeah. them. They don't, like, it's not like the old days where they get, like, a film reel and they can just show it ad nauseum over and over again. Right. Yeah, they, they do... Usually, like similar to like gas stations, they don't make money off the gas. They make money off of like the stuff inside, the convenience stuff. Yeah. So, but yeah. Oh, small story for those that remember my. I know I keep going on a rant. I want to continue this episode. Uh, my last quick trip thing where that guy made fun of me for liking like Reese's peanut butter cups. I went to another quick trip today and got. This is a totally different quick trip here in town. And just, like, got a bunch of food and some, like, drinks that I was, like, some energy drinks that I was going to use, like, later this week. So I was kind of stocking up. And he goes, do you want a bag? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. And he just hands it to me. And he's like, well, I didn't say I'd put them in the bag. And I'm like, I didn't think I'd put them in. Okay, quick trip. Okay, you snarky <laughs> quick trip employees. <laughs> then he laughed, and he obviously put them in the bag. Right. But I was like, man, <laughs> what about This is the what joke about I tell trip? all the people that come in. It be. never gets old for me. <laughs> Gotta be, right? <laughs> like, yeah. But anyways... I'm done. Go watch Madam Web or don't. I don't care. Simeon, there's some pretty cool stuff that we got to see this week. Do you want to kick us off with uh, with this little guy? Ooh, this, this little dude? This little dude? Yeah, so uh, if you're not following WizKids HeroClix Facebook page... You should be following WizKids Hero Hook's Facebook page. It's probably the the best place to uh, get updates. Um, I think second only to Dial H, honestly. Like, and I don't mean I don't mean that in a bad way. But some of their updates are just, hey, check out Dial H. So maybe you should listen to us and then check them out as well. But uh, anyhow, WizKids Hero Clicks posted Marvel Studios Hero Clicks next phase. Baby Groot Chase, number 060. He is a Guardian of the Galaxy team uh, team ability figure. But mm-hmm. I, first, I want to get into the sculpt, because the sculpt is hilarious. Oh, it's cool. He's got, like, the Hogan mustache, like, the big handlebar mustache, but it's, like, made out of moss. And then he's got these, like, big, like, kind of muscly arms, but they're just leaves on, like, his twig arms. And then he's got some giant, like, hair thing going on, so he's... The I hair's kind of weird. Shorts, I liked it. But I assume that like he was doing some sort of wrestling stuff in this one. So in this short, he just finds out that while he's like taking a bath or whatever, that wherever he puts the mud is where like his leaves will grow faster. So he goes through this montage of he's like an astronaut, a princess, a wrestler, like a pirate, like a, like a couple of random like things. You know? Okay, sure. No, but this yeah. is just like one of his his Groot outfits that he that he has, his leaf outfits. Pretty fun. Yeah, so he has like most of the baby Groots that we've seen, he has shifting focus, I am Groot. Free, if baby Groot began your turn on the map, replace him with another character with this trait on the same click number. And then he has a special speed power, his whole dial, and that is off the top rope, charge when Baby Groot uses it and changes ev- elevations after resolutions, he may use Quake as free. So if you charge off of a higher elevation, you get to hit your opponent and then Quake is free. It's a really fun mechanic. It's a really fun uh, WWE style, like wrestling style thing. WWE did not recognize elevated terrain, so... It did not. So yeah. it's so funny that it's very he interesting. does. Yeah, yeah cool. that he he specifically gets that, and it makes a lot of sense. Um, his dial, it's like the all the other baby Groots. It's five clicks long. He has six speed. His whole dial. He has an eleven attack for his first two clicks with super strength, a ten attack for his last three clicks with precision strike, 
uh, and vulnerability, his whole dial with some 18s, mostly 18s, and the last two clicks are 17s, and then three damage his whole dial. Uh, the first two clicks he has, Groot's going to run wild on you. Ooh, yeah, Groot's going to run wild on you. Uh, perplex, but may modify a value by minus two instead, which I think we've seen that before Man. on a, a wrestling character, well, maybe. He could, do, he could do plus one or plus two. Well, he could do plus two if he targeted himself, I believe. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This Groot is only... He, he can like plus one anything, or he can right. minus two a value. But, uh, yeah, he's got that as first two clicks, and then clicks three, four, and five. He has close combat expert. So he technically, since he doesn't have any range, he's always going to be an 11. And then his last three clicks, he's going to be four damage instead of three damage. Ooh. So, but no super strength. So yeah, no he super is like strength, a potential five damage top dial. Right. I love and, this uh, I guess the only other thing is he's tiny size and ignores yeah, elevated. Yeah, it's hilarious, and he's just like tiny, and tiny, he's gonna walk around holding tiny, like picking up the three up. by three elevated yeah. chunk. You know, like that's hilarious. So also think about that when you think about his reach top dial. Is he's got super strength, so he probably is gonna have like giant reach three, or maybe even. And I think that's the max they've ever done. So like giant reach three at least. Like that's really cool. What's funny is I didn't think about this, but you could have him on one of those like one by one elevated squares he could charge go down from that Ooh, and pick then it up. he hits that second or like that adjacent the second square, elevation he yeah you can yeah. grab it and Ooh. then yeah so then he gets uh he gets to use his quake as free and he can also use a heavy or not a heavy jeez he can use a terrain action in that that charge and then quake as free so this is a very fun, interesting piece. I will say it's not as complex as most chases are, but it is a shifting yeah. focus, so it makes sense that it's not super complex because you're going to be shifting this guy out with, I think, like, what are we at? Like, five? We've seen the common, the rare, this chase, and then we saw the, the set list that has another baby Groot. It has listed. another baby Groot as a chase. So yeah. Four, maybe, total? Common, uncommon, rare. Well, then there's also the pizza box. Oh, that's right, yeah. So this is a pretty, like, expansive. I don't think there's been a bigger shifting focus since Deadpool. This is Deadpool-sized, or if not similar, Deadpool had, like, seven. Well, if we don't count each bathrobe, he had, like, six. Right. Right? He had, like, six. So this Groot also has, like, five, six. So the second biggest shifting focus one is then little baby Groot here. Pretty cool. Pretty good. I, I honestly, I prefer more shifting focus over less you know, like 100%. So I like it. I will say it's a bit of a bummer that he is a chase. That I really won't lie, just because this is probably the one Groot that I want more than the others, because this is obviously, like, in my opinion, the coolest. So I guess it also makes sense it's a chase, because it is the coolest, and therefore, like, I would rather get this one as a chase than just peed pajamas Groot, you know what I mean? So, like, fine. So I'm okay with it. I guess maybe I've talked myself into being okay okay with this being a chase. Um, but it's cool. I like him. I like him a lot. Yeah. He's pretty pretty fun sculpt and pretty neat little abilities, I think. Next up, we're going we're going down. We're going south of the border here, Simeon. Our friends over at Toxic Clicks. That's right, Saul and Richie got to show off the Wong and Madison duo figure chase. That is also in this set. They are pretty cool. They're pretty neat. Um, I've been enjoying the funny, meme joke characters that are in Next Phase. I think that's personally the fun, the most fun part of the set. Um, for those that play Magic, or and I hate to try to draw comparison to Magic. Trust me, this kills every bone in my body. Um, for those that play Magic, or at least are aware, they do like an Unfinity set or an Un-something it's like an un-whatever set every once in a while. I think the cards aren't legal. I honestly don't know. Um, if you want to message the page and tell me, you can. I, I will be able to sleep at night n not knowing or knowing. Don't worry. Um, but they do this set where it's like all just joke characters, joke abilities, ridiculous stuff. Like the My Little Pony stuff isn't legal. And it's just like if you're smiling or looking at a card, it can't do. Like that's hilarious. So I really have been enjoying the more meme-y fun joke 
stuff. It's like that's been I want more of that in Hero Clicks. I want just the game to feel wacky. People that are like, make sure it's all serious all the time. It's like, dude, these are people that wear tights. Let's calm down. It ain't that deep. <laughs> so like Steve, Wong and Madison, Donnie Blaze, Dancing Zemo, all these just like really silly ones. That's the stuff that I really love about this set. And I know not everybody is saying they like that stuff or they just dislike it. I personally, it's like my favorite part about that set. And I do wish we could get a full set that is just wild, wacky joke stuff. Batmite, Mr. Migzia Spitlick, you know, stuff like that. Impossible Man, like the really ridiculous, dumb, fun characters. Um, Next Wave from like, you know, with Devil Dino, all that stuff. Like That was a joke kind of comic book run, a very unserious run so that's why i love madison and wong here they are hilarious so madison and wong wong and madison king real names mystics team ability three range one target 60 points magia celebrity martial artist and mystical i assume the magia bit because they they reference it later on is a reference to the sopranos later in this card i feel like it's got to be what it is yeah but they got Two traits based on the, the other powers, yeah. Yeah. So they have a full dial of sidestep, full dial of TK, full dial of T- uh, perplex, four speed the entire time, three damage the entire time, 18 for half the dial, 17 for the rest of the dial, and then an 11 for four clicks, and then a 10 for two clicks. Pretty fun, pretty fun little piece. Six clicks life. First trait, I don't know. It's blue, and that's Madison and Wong uh, talking about drinks, I want to say. They're talking about, like, cocktails and stuff. At the beginning of your turn, you may choose any two dark blue or light blue powers. Wong and Madison can use those powers until you choose again. You can give them shape change. You can give them mastermind, pen sigh. They can be a great plasticity tie-up piece. Or maybe they're now your shape change prop or their barrier prop. They could be an in-cap. Uh, it probably would be a pretty bad in-cap piece, <laughs> actually, with sidestep three range. One target. Or they could be a mind control piece. They also have perplex, so they could be a really close combat in the way 12 attack mind control something you know so either way getting like shape change mastermind probability control barrier pretty dang good so solid powers to choose from and then the second trade is uh fine but no more spoilers like how wong says it at the beginning of the game you generate a couch hindering terrain marker within four squares of your starting area characters occupying the couch marker can use probability control and have safeguard opposing probability control okay so maybe you don't choose prop control i guess as a light blue power because they will just get it but still pretty cool or they could also just choose it and then other people other people can just have prop which is really cool and then their special defense powers is mob shows and popcorn gives them toughness if wong and madison occupy the couch marker they take a maximum of one damage from attacks and the couch marker has indestructible and immobile, and this defense power has protected at wit. I will say, neat thing though, if you do kill Wong and Madison, then the couch marker no longer has indestructible or immobile. Um, I guess it also only has that if they are in the couch marker. So they are a 60 point piece that just straight up takes six attacks to KO. You can always, of course, knock them out of the couch marker or something. Yeah, you know, mind control, force blast. Mind control, move them, force There's, blast, yeah. super strength, knock back. Handful of um, options, but... Yeah, but they're fun. Yeah. Um, the I couch marker very fun, gives you piece. four range, uh, no extra targets, uh, gives you a two with giant reach, plus one damage, and then it takes three damage to destroy it. But of course, if they occupy it, it is indestructible, so... That's the couch marker. Pretty dang fun. I like Wong and Madison, and it's also just really cool to see some love for Toxic Looks getting to preview something. And now we only have like a handful of figures before. Hopefully, we can do our set review next week. That'd be really nice. Yeah. That, that, That'd yeah be especially on the lead up to Adepticon, it'd be nice to be able to have the full set because some people at Adepticon will be playing with it. So, hey, yeah, dude, exactly. And the last piece of Hero news we're going to talk about this week is WizKids saying, thank you for all your feedback and previous week's surveys. We have good news. In 2025, we will have a DC Hero Clicks booster release with a Lanterns theme. Requested by many of you, the fan, this was an easy decision for the team and development of the set will begin soon. This week, we'd like to hear about your experiences teaching Hero Clicks to others. We're also eager to learn what kind of Lantern characters and constructs okay okay they're cooking that you'd like to see 
This is pretty dang interesting. Number one, hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, we're getting a freaking lantern. It does say a set with a lantern steam. It does say a booster release with a lantern steam. I don't know if that means it will be a lantern set or if it's just a set that will have a lantern theme in it. Either way, let's freaking go. That is freaking awesome. Yeah. I literally that's... can't wait. Like, I've talked so much. Anytime anyone's ever asked me, what do you want for a DC set? I'm, I go, I want a lantern set. Yeah. I want another lantern set. Like, it's a no-brainer to it's me. It's been a I long love, time since we've had a lantern's mainstay, like, kind of, like, well, honestly, I think it's only happened once. Like, War of the Light, I guess. I mean, there, there's a few... A few sets where they did like um, more lantern right. stuff. DC seventy but... fifth had a strong amount yeah. of lanterns. That's also like 10, 14 years ago. Um, wow! Outside of War of the Light, was there any set that has had just lan- no the Green Lantern movie set? Oh my gosh, that's actually kind of insane. If it really is just War of the Light, was the only set that was like a pure lantern set that was like. The thing we're pushing is lanterns, and that's what the set is based around. I think you're right, Simeon. Oh my gosh! Yeah, doesn't doesn't feel good. Hey, feels, no, feels, feels like feels, it's way overdue. But it feels way overdue. The good news is that years, it, it is later, a 2025 is, set. Eleven yeah. years later, you get a lantern set. It is slated for 2025. Wow! As we are now in the the second month of 2024, Man. only Dude, ten months I'm, and some change to wait. I'm scrolling back, and I feel like besides Green Lantern movie, that actually is the only... I mean, there's the Blackest Night, Brightest Day, Starters. Those aren't main sets. Critical, Crisis, Batman. Oh my gosh, dude. Justice League, Legion of Superheroes. Yeah, you're right. That is like... I guess there's a Green Lantern box. Again, not a main set. Dang, dude. You're like right. That is like the only set that's actually been a full Lantern-based set. Otherwise, they've just had pretty decent sub-themes. Oh my goodness. Yeah, we need more Lantern sets. Let's not let it be another 11 years between Lantern sets. And I get it. Um, We've had very strong Lantern themes these past three DC sets. Wonder Woman, obviously, strong Lantern theme. Batman team up, strong. Honestly, a bit, like, not as strong of a Lantern theme, but just like, okay, yeah, these are some of the main Lanterns of each core. And then again, like, four more Green Lanterns, which is what Wonder Woman was. And then... Whatever. Re- Rebirth was just a Black Lantern. Not Rebirth, excuse me. Notorious was just Black Lanterns. And then, like, Lex had the Orange Lantern keyword that Superman had, like, Sinestro Core. There was a Sinestro. But it wasn't totally, like, Lantern Lantern. So a dedicated Lantern theme, that's just awesome. I yeah, literally cannot say how excited I am. So, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. I really, I've pitched this every single time. Please give us an XDPS or AI style set. People might get tired of DC Colossals, except no, they won't, because even after the Jurassic League Colossals, they're still going to want more. I'll say this a million times. Please give me Guy Gardner with a monster truck or a Dodge Charger. Please give me Kyle Rayner in a Green Lantern, like mech suit on a 2x2. Hal Jordan in his like normal jet or a Green Lantern jet. And then like John Stewart with like a crane or something. Please give me 2814 Lanterns with 2x2 Colossal Constructs. And then other lanterns also with colossal constructs because those will literally look uh, so freaking sick. Oh my gosh, they would look so cool. And there's also, and I forget the Sinestro core guy's name, but he's also just like everybody on his planet is like a giant. Like he is just a tall, like 30 foot tall guy. So he would also be a really cool dude to get as a a two by two. Uh, What about you, Simeon? What do you want to see in a lantern set? Uh, Yeah, my main thing would be lanterns on a base like actually making a construct so i really liked the jlu i think it was jlu the john stewart that had like the giant fist i really liked that and then like the made the dial like similar i love generating constructs from like you know the sideline whatever uh not really sideline but like from the ether um but what i would rather do is i would rather have like kyle rayner with his ring held like slightly behind his back some effect that's going behind mm, him and right. just like making the all these like missiles or something, you know, art yeah. of the sculpt versus being yeah a being a part thing. of the sculpt and then the dial I matches agree. that sculpt. Like it would, I would really love that. And then you know if they also can make random constructs in addition to that, sure. But I think even just getting away from like the construct idea that we have currently with the rings, going to specific like bystanders that each one makes based on like their skull yeah. would be fine with me too. I don't, I don't need 
one lantern to be able to access every single thing. Is it cool? Yeah. But it also seems way too good sometimes. It seems like way too much can happen with just like one little ring. And so, I don't know. I'm I'm big into the sculpts. I hope they bring back Hero Glow for this set. I oh think my that it would be gosh, so genius. cool to uh yeah, just get literally anybody with translucent stuff that glows. I think that'd be awesome. The green lanterns like grow the green lanterns glow green, like the red lanterns glow red. Dude, green bases, red bases. Oh. Oh. That would be so sick. Oh my gosh, that would be so sick. Oh duh. A new anti monitor. Durr. Absolutely. But yeah, dude. Hero glow? Are you kidding me? Oh. oh. And we've already seen how cool blue looks. Oh my gosh. Give us some cool blue lanterns. Brother Wraith. Please. Oh. Please. Blue looks so cool. Yellow, sadly, I think not the super coolest in Iron Fist, but I think if there's just more yellow, it will pop more. So I would like that. Red, of course. Goaded. I don't know how well Indigo would be the what's it called glowing in the dark but i'll still please oh my gosh yes hero glow oh no thoughts only hero glow brain empty <laughs> basically dude genius as far as like the constructs go yeah i would say just make them part of the sculpt i don't need or or special terrain hmm hmm mm-hmm. I think it'd be kind of cool to say this character can generate a piece of special terrain instantly and then, like, use it in attack or something. That would be... Or just, like, maybe the play-at-home kit stuff is just all constructs, and maybe they have a trait where it's, like, you can add this and instantly hold it or something at the beginning of your turn, or you can just, like, make a new construct or something. But it's, like, special terrain. Because, well, you know, what really is a construct besides just a thing you hit someone with? You know, ultimately, at the end of the day, or a thing you shoot someone with, like, right? Well, I, I guess if you want to get really about it, it's also there's In also comics, like a whole. It is kind of like a a one and done kind of thing. Like, yeah, it's like okay, I make a bat once, hit you with it, it's kind of gone. Yeah, I've they don't. It doesn't else. just like stay there and like continue to. <laughs> I mean, maybe maybe there's a few times where like the there. I mean, there is. Few... I'll just keep beating somebody with it. But also doing, you could just do like special terrain too. So like, there's like one of my favorite constructs, at least that Guy Gardner ever made, was he made a a turnbuckle corner and was slamming people into it. Like that's hilarious. Give me an L shaped piece of terrain. That's a a Green Lantern, Red Lantern, whatever turnbuckle corner. That when they get knocked back into it, like it's an extra damage. Oh oh, this is so sick. Sorry, I could literally think about Lantern stuff all day because it's the dopest. They're literally one of the most creative things ever because they can make literally anything. It's so dope. Yeah, it's, it's one so of the sick. best power sets too. And like, as far as like the like the, the like dial and like design of like them goes, it opens up literally anything. Like depending on like the sculpt and whatever, it opens up so many options for what these characters can do because they like quite literally could be the same as any combination of like other heroes because of like the things that their rings can do granted right. in like the comics it's not on like the same like they're never gonna be like as strong as hulk or be able to like punch as hard as hulk or whatever right. but as far as hero clicks go like they could have super strength they could have close combat expert they could have like maybe like you know battle fury isn't like that like far out of the question either depending i mean probably for like a red lantern but yeah there's like a lot of fun interesting options to go down and i I really like the lanterns from, like, the Harley Quinn lanterns from that set. Her black and red lantern and the oh, prime yeah. green one. I kind of, like, want them to do something like that again. Whereas I kind of hated the dial of... The, I, I think it was the, the red and black one. I kind of hated the dial where it was, like, all the gold powers. It was, like, hypersonic, poison, perplex, all and impervious. Stuff. But at the same time, I kind of really liked that because it was very fitting for like what that version of that character was yeah it's cool it's literally it's literally the dopest i today at dragon slayer we played 500 points you could be anybody so i played a team of all just characters named guy gardner had to be share the same name just because i was getting excited for this lantern set and in talking with mike mike is also as like he was really big fan of team he was like that is my Captain America. Like, it's implying that, like, that's his favorite character. That's his, like, you know, who he really likes. 
You know, I was like, ah, he's like my DC's Captain America. You know, he's like my favorite DC character for sure. So we kind of broed out and we started to talk about not that this is what should, what should be in the Lantern set, because I understand Guy Gardner is not the most popular Lantern. I'm well aware of that. But we just got to talking about how many different iterations of Guy there actually is. There's the Gal Gardner version where he's turned into a girl for a while. I think that would honestly be really fun to get. There's Warrior Guy. I can live without Warrior Guy. I don't need that at all, but it exists and isn't in Hero Clicks. There is probably my favorite version of quote unquote like Warrior Guy is Guy when he challenges Arkillo to a fist fight and then he takes off his ring and Arkillo takes off his ring and Guy actually beats Arkillo in a straight up fist fight, which is impressive. Like, come on. That's impressive. Yeah. That's dope. Um, so, like, that was really cool. It's so, like a depowered guy who is just, like, all Battle Fury, close combat expert sidestep, like a 30-point piece. That'd be cool. Um, if they want to bring back the alternate, uh, what's it called? Oh, my gosh. When they when the normal version of the character, like, when Peter Parker died, he could turn into Spider-Man. Secret Identity. Oh, I think yeah, that yeah. could be cool in this set. The secret Identity, people, yeah. People might hate it. I personally really enjoyed Secret Identity. So, if they had, like, you know, Hal Jordan, who's, like, pilot mechanic guy hal jordan yeah, test pilot Baz, dude who still has a gun still has a gun just saying <laughs> ian and i were talking he was like not a fan of simon baz having a gun and i'm like that's hilarious what do you mean oh it's that's like awesome the, quite literally like, the best part of him as like a green lantern yeah, yeah dude the exactly fact that he's like just in case the ring isn't here i still have a gun like that's his well whole i mean thing. That's again, well, that's how he thing, beats but... that's how he beat Sinestro when yeah. they were both trapped in the power battery or whatever. Neither one had rings. He was like, Well, I guess we have to do this the okay, yeah. And he's like, Oh, what's that? And he's like, Oh, it's it's a it's a gun. And Sinestro's <laughs> like, ah, Americans, amazing. It's hilarious. Like yeah. so I I think it'd be really cool to do like all the two eight one four lanterns. You could honestly do them in any way. I know people would rather have more obscure lanterns, and I agree. I would say fill out the obscure stuff too. But I also wouldn't hate getting literally every single version ever. Oh, also really quick, the Yellow Lantern Guy Gardner, where him and Lobo beat up Sinestro, just punked him, and then took his ring, and then Guy charges this without needing a battery, and then just using pure, like, fighting spirit or whatever. He's, like, kind of Kamina when he has the Yellow Lantern ring. It's just the more he fights, the better it gets. It's kind of interesting. It's kind of weird. Um, but the Yellow Lantern ring guy from his 90s and only, and only solo run that he's ever had from 1992 that guy would also be cool so there's just a ton of green lantern history that hasn't been fleshed out and honestly if they made a full green lantern or just lantern based set that had one of each of the main guys i feel like you can't not have the main dudes in it even if they're like commons and commons super rares don't make them i mean you could make them chases i guess if you if you must um but i feel like you have to have the main 2814 lanterns like jessica joe whatever Al, John, Kyle, all that stuff. But then, yeah, fill it out with the weird alien lanterns. Please yeah. give us Nort. I want Nort so bad. <laughs> It'd be so Nort. funny. Bedovkin, or whatever that guy's name is. Bedovkin. Dragonborn. I think that's his name. Uh, That doesn't sound... I, I mean, if you're making... Bedovian. Oh, I was okay. like, oh, I was like, Nord is I not was... a dragon. He's a silly dog man. What are you talking no. about? <laughs> yeah, Dov yeah, yeah, yeah. Bedovian. Yes, please. Bedovian. I don't... I don't give know us, why that was the, one that, the first one that popped in my head. Yeah. Yeah. Do you give us an uh, Abin Sur KO effect? Honestly, okay, actually, here's this. What if we don't get any of like the Green Lantern 2814 lanterns and instead we get an iconic set that's the 2814 lanterns? Personally, I like that more. Now that I've said it out loud and just thought of it a second ago, I think I'd be okay with that. John Stewart, Hal Jordan, Kyle, Guy. Not in the main set. Instead they're in an Iconics, and they, like, are really just insanely dope. I think I'd be okay with that as well. There's a lot. There's just so much you can do. Yeah. I could spout. I could spout Lantern-related nonsense for literally hours. But if you, listener, want to also spout Lantern-related nonsense, well, in this post, I don't even know if I mentioned this, in this post, they are asking your input for, like, what characters to include, uh, as well as a few other things. So make sure you have some fun, fleshed-out answers they ask things like, what factors make you want to add a collection, uh, want to add a figure to your collection? And there's quite a bit of choices here. And then it like has a bunch of them. And then it says, okay, but now choose one. So 
kind of get to the the main focus there and then uh what influences you to buy however many figures per set that you buy power level number of chases chase theme set theme unclicks blah 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 blah. and then it says again narrow it down then they have a big written question block which is how do you teach hero clicks to other people and then it says when teaching hero clicks what figures do you usually use um, what are your experiences teaching or learning hero clicks? And then they end it with what lantern constructs, core members, and villains would you like to see in an upcoming DC hero click set? And then they have a little, is there anything else you'd like to say? So make sure you really, I would say, flesh out these answers. Give the old, uh, give the old WizKids interns a <laughs> run for their money. Kidding, kidding, guys. With all love, all love. Um, but yeah, seriously, flesh out these answers. Make sure you're well articulated and everything and just kind of go through your thoughts and opinions. Because I think... As you've just seen from Simeon and I chatting, there's an insane amount of stuff you can do with a Lantern set. And I am so excited by the mere idea of finally getting one. It's just so cool. And that's all I'll say so we can move on with the show. No Fair enough, yeah. Yeah. Um, so check that out, guys. Really quickly now, let's move on over. I say move. We're still on Facebook. Let's go ahead and answer some Facebook questions. There are dozens of us. Dozens! Since we're talking lanterns, we'll just get into Win Vincent's question. He asks, if you guys legacy carded the lantern constructs, what would you make? Objects or change any of the existing constructs? So legacy cards for a lantern construct. I think instantly it's got to be Spotlight needs to get a legacy card if yeah. we were to say let's make the spotlight more useful because nobody uses spotlight and it's kind of a shame because i feel like there should never be a construct where it's like i never see a scenario in me ever using this and that's a bummer ultimately that's just kind of a bummer where it's like every other construct has a use somewhere defensively um the stop sign or removing their defenses the hydrant offensively the boot the chainsaw or to give them tokens, you know, the lasso, where the spotlight just kind of feels like, oh, I've made literally every other construct. I guess I'll make the spotlight. Um, and the mitt also as a defensive construct, uh, just so I don't forget the mitt. So what does the spotlight do? Yeah. Um, I've already forgotten what it does, because I've never used it in the year <laughs> it's been out. Improved targeting. It has hindering, and then you choose an opposing character, then six squares and line of fire. The chosen character modifies range and attack minus one when making range attacks until your next turn. It's just so situational. It's not super useful. I simply think if it just said, number one, I think the spotlight should just straight up have enhancement. Maybe that is overpowered, but I think if it was just sidestep ESD enhancement, instantly, I love it. So maybe if it doesn't want to have enhancement, sure, Even fair if enough. If it just had like stats and could see through hindering, so like it could at least that too. Like if it was pop somebody what? that was in hindering, or ten something. attack, precision strike, one damage, sees through hindering, perfect. Yeah, ten attack, one damage. Yeah. The the problem yeah. with it is four range. It's a spotlight, but the only the only thing that it's doing is illuminating the target for itself. And right like, yeah kind of blinding them i guess is like you know modify range and attack minus one which is like that's fine it's just i'm like spotlighting somebody so like if somebody's like hiding and i spotlight them it should make it easier for everyone else to see them too and it doesn't I agree. do that which is just weird it's very weird to me i 100 percent agree 100 percent agree so what other ones i guess i think so to me straight up spotlight makes the most sense i think I think the rest of the mainline BTU Wonder Woman constructs are probably fine. I don't know if I would feel the need to legacy card them or change at all what they do besides yeah. the spotlight. I would I like Fire say... Hydrant to do something that makes more sense Fire hydrant -y. Like Cowboy Boots already doing like the free knockback and stuff, but like if Fire Hydrant had like Force Blast on the car, like on the dial or whatever... Mm -hmm on the bystander and then force blast is free i think that'd make more sense like you're opening force the fire hydrant you're getting like all when the they use it something place water terrain yeah. along the path the character travels just something removing like two hindering or blocking just seems I, I mean it's good it's not bad as is it's just right it doesn't make a lot of sense for a fire hydrant to do that just like, washing away yeah uh, the, yeah washing away blocking terrain or yeah you know, i guess that's a little wild <laughs> Alternatively, I think the lasso could have TK. I think you could TK with the lasso oh, yeah. versus saying like incapacitate. I think that can work. 
can you TK opposing characters right now? No, you can't. Right? No, you can't. No, not anymore. Not unless it's like the some rules. <laughs> they keep changing the rules, and I keep forgetting. Okay, you can TK objects though, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and you can make attacks with them and stuff. Still. Yeah, I've used TK recently. <laughs> ha 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 ha. I think yeah. I think the lasso if it had like a special TK where it says you can target opposing characters with it, um, that would be so insanely strong as a power action to just do that without rolling to attack. I guess with new TK rules, um, but maybe you could do something kind of fun but i think that'd be cool maybe to only to tk them two squares or something where it's like a free place i guess at that point just give it free place an opposing character two squares away from its current square there you go that's how you would do it oh man for the, for the war of light ones man the problem is like there's so many and they're already like very good from like what they used to do but if you were to give them dials i think it could work if you were just like spawning something and maybe it didn't actually give you like a you know adjacent right. friendlies can really... do this or that that kind of thing and they just had like attack values but yeah like the mallet just being like a sidestep quake three damage and like toughness or something that could be fine uh the net being like a plasticity shape change i don't know like something something like that where it's just like an annoying thing where you like throw this bystander out and suddenly like anyone next to it maybe it's got like special plasticity where it's like uh characters can't automatically break away or ignore or something um then yeah like you have like the axe originally had blades claws fangs and it's like what else like what what is the axe compared to like the chain is it just worse chainsaw because like technically maybe give it exploit maybe it's just like an 11 for 3 exploit right versus blades what it used to do yeah that'd probably be better but yeah there's there's so many good ones. Uh, the decoy and the nurse, obviously, like nurse being just like a bystander that has support would be insane. Uh, the decoy just being like, again, something that is kind of like a body blocker, how it would be better than the net. If the net's doing like plasticity, I don't know, but maybe you give them both plasticity and they just work slightly different. Um, but yeah, there's so many options from those original ones. I think we had like 14 of each color. Is that right? One, two, oh, three, geez. four. That might be how many five, six, it was. Seven, there eight. was a lot of War of Light ones. Yeah. Sniper rifle is like another one where you just give it like a solid range, like one damage precision strike. And like, I think that'd be fine. I don't even think it needs like okay. sidestep or anything. Like, I generate this next to me because like that's how rifles work, is they have to be pretty close to you to, you, to work. Uh, uh, and then, yeah, true. you just, like, fire at the person with it. I think that's... I think it's fun. Thematic makes sense. Right on. Let's go ahead and move into our next set of questions. That's the Lantern set. Get excited for the Lantern set. Tell WizKids what you want in the Lantern set. Door closed on that one. <laughs> Malcolm Rush, he's got a couple of questions. He asks... Oh, well, he says, This May, I'm going to a rock concert. Rock and roll, bro. Shaka bra. The group name is Scandal. Ooh, ah. Scandalous. Have you heard of this band? No. No, no, I have not. not. No? Okay. Simeon's also a no. Yeah. Please, check them out. And also check out another Japanese band called Band Made. Ah! Get it? Band Made. Like, Band-Aid. Oh, (laughs) I was thinking, like, Handmade. Oh, well, maybe Handmade, too. I was thinking Band-Aid. But yeah, Band Made. Their band 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 probably Hmm? dressed like maids. Probably. (laughs) Here are some heroes rated questions, though. Uh, He says to make a 300-point team but the sculptures must have some kind of musical instrument on it. For this one, I'll say Kevin's team from a few weeks ago at Rainbow, where he played the Aguengers chases, because most of them have a musical instrument worked into their costume somehow. Yeah. Otherwise, it's like very few. Like very Pied hard. Piper, Prime very Batman. hard. There's not a lot of other figures that have instruments on the sculpt. Not a ton. At least not that come to my mind off the top of my head. Second was make a 300-point hero host team, but the characters has to have a history of playing musical instrument in comics, TV show, cartoons, or in the movies. Uh, I did not do this. I apologize. Uh, my only addition is saying maybe add The Rock to one of the teams because he played guitar at least that one time. Oh, yeah. Making fun of Vicky, so... Yeah, you could do... At the very least, there's for that. For WWE-wise, you could do The Rock. John Cena had... Not really like a musical. Oh yeah, he was rapping. No, okay. 
Was there any if, other? If the new day would have gotten made, yeah. we could have, could have had Xavier Woods on the on the. the I mean, if the the new day that I pre-ordered have, had ever been released. Oh, this is so sad. Uh, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is so sad. And then uh, in the in the Star Trek, sticking with like indie uh, Star Trek universe, um, you have Data, who's obviously since he's an android, he's like a master of all the musical instruments. So he plays musical instruments, and then Riker also. Uh, plays like the saxophone, so there's at least two from that. Uh, and then Data was like shifting focus, so you could definitely make a team combining some of that stuff. And then that's basically where my knowledge drops off. I don't know how many like comic book characters actually actively play an instrument in like comics. I genuinely don't know. Like I don't think I've ever seen that. I mean, it's probably like you know a panel here and there like i'm sure there's been like a yeah. scene where wolverine's like at a piano and they're like i didn't know you could play and he's like yeah i'm 400 years old of course i picked up an instrument this whole time you know huh. i'm sure that's like somewhere out there but i've never personally like committed that to memory so i can't say for sure so Might exist. yeah you never know <clears throat> fun premise though it is Next up, do you play a musical instrument? If so, which one? I used to play piano when I was in some small child age range grade. I forget what grade I would have been in, but I used to do piano. I did at least one piano recital. And now if you showed me a keyboard, I couldn't tell you where G is. Um, I, have no, I have no clue how to play the piano anymore. Um, and that's it. That's all I used to know how to play. Simeon, do you play any instruments? Have you ever known how to play an instrument? I've been practicing guitar on and off for Ooh. like 10 years, but I've never gotten like good enough to like actually, I'm just, it comes the way that like math comes like super easy to me. Numbers just like make a lot of sense to me. Music is like the opposite reading yeah. musical notes and stuff. It's very hard because it becomes like a very, just like memorization of where my hands need to go, where like my fingers need to go. So it's, been a long slow process and i also do, just don't practice very often so a lot of the times when i do practice it's relearning what i used to know um but yeah so i i've technically played a song okay. on guitar i think it was uh i think it was purple haze it was like the one that okay I did, so. okay uh, but yeah it's i wouldn't consider myself somebody that can actually play an instrument more so just somebody that has an instrument and they occasionally attempt okay well hey right on that's kind of at least kind of cool huh. uh number four is what kind of music do you listen to i am all over the place but obviously stereotypically i'm like mostly country i love I me mean, toby keith the goat that's my favorites but a lot of alan jackson a lot of chris ledoux george Strait, stuff like that those are kind of my guys i love that country early 2000s 90s country i love older 80s country too and even the really really old stuff like the 50s stuff can be really fun to listen to the country ballads i love um and then like acdc 80s rock and roll i enjoy billy joel i really enjoy um hair rock some 2000s pop rock i like what's it called america all american rejects i like those guys um yeah kind of all over the place the I think about the only music I don't listen to is like modern pop or rap. So yeah. besides that stuff, I pretty much listen to I would say pretty much everything. I guess not screamo, but you know, like I'll listen to like Doom Eternal, heavy metal, like stuff like that. You know, so I'm kind of all over the place. I like a lot of different stuff. I love parody music. Sorry, last one I'll say. Love parody music. Weird Al, that stuff's awesome. Half the time, I know that one more than the actual. That's like the most pop say, music I'll ever listen to. Out is of the pop, pop music, that's the that's yeah, yeah. Like the best version yeah. of pop is uh, yeah. Weird Al covers. I love I love those, and I love other parody songs like too. There's this who are these girls on YouTube? They made this hilarious uh, Stacy's Dad parody. Like that's hilarious. I love that. Oh, there they are, right there. Oh, cool. What's their name? Anna Pantsu is her name on YouTube. She's got oh, a lot yeah. of fun music. Okay, let's, yeah, yeah, so that. That's familiar name. I can't yeah. think of what it sounds yeah. like. I'll She's got a lot of fun head, but, yeah. covers and parody songs. It's pretty Not a lot of fun. pantsuits out there. Not a lot of pantsuits. Yeah, not a lot of pantsuits. So. Pretty I don't know, Simeon, Simeon, hit us with your music recommendations oh. slash what you like to listen to. Uh, yeah, like I I dabble mostly in like the uh, anything that's not like super mainstream, which is just like 
such a hipster aesthetic. I don't really even want to say it, but like that's true. Like I <laughs> I love small bands that haven't like hit it big or just like aren't as popular. It's not to say that I don't listen to like bigger bands that are really popular. Like I listen to like, you know, mainstream artists all the time as well, but uh the the little niches that I really love in music are the people that um I would say like are still making their way in music and so okay they haven't hit like the quote unquote like sellout phase that some some musicians eventually get to like the you know when they find out what's popular and they just keep doing that like the they get a radio single that like goes out and they're like oh I'll just keep doing that and then you have like yet another pop icon kind of thing but as far as genre goes I'm all over the place some of it's not even like in English like it's just random literally anything with like a good hook a good lyric um doesn't even have to be like the full song doesn't have to be good if it's just a good opening like riff i'll add that to like my playlist the only things i don't really listen to like calder said is like the i don't i'm not a huge fan of like pop and i'm not a huge fan of like the modern country stuff so other than that you know i'll listen to pretty much anything and when i listen to like like rap is it's i tend to like sway more towards like the hip-hop side of like rap i don't listen to like most what is it like east coast rap i don't know you're asked the wrong person to <laughs> yeah. tell you the difference in rap um, i think i'm I'm more of like a west coast rap kind of like when i do listen to it but it all just depends like i'm big into like the message that the song is like has and i'm big into uh if a song just has like a good hook or like a good yeah like sucker for a trumpet like a random trumpet in a song for some reason that's just like yeah love More that trumpet, trumpet. <laughs> I, I will i will say movie soundtracks like the first deadpool movie that's what got me to ever listen to dmx ever you know oh, yeah and so like if it's in a movie soundtrack i'll maybe lean toward enjoying that like i love the peacemaker show spotify playlist it's so awesome not gonna lie i do skip the uh john cena piano melody every time because it does kill the vibe it's at a t- depressing point in the show um and the rest of the music is very like push push goes the lightning like it's like really pumped up energized music that they use in the peacemaker show and then it's just john cena's depressing piano playing which is uh, was great in the show at the time but like not when you're want to have a good time going for a run working out whatever but like some shows that have a great soundtrack great choices in music once again shout out echo not only great sound design but great choices in music i've been loving listening to the echo like soundtrack the curated like what music they chose so like yeah certain movies and shows i'll listen to but not like star wars like star wars is great or like lord of the rings but i'm not gonna listen like orchestra stuff you know what i mean like if they choose songs that have existed as their soundtrack i'm not listening to like you know, Avengers portals all the time, even though it goes insanely hard. <laughs> obviously it goes insanely hard, but like, obviously. I don't make, I gotta have some lyrics. Gotta have some lyrics. Um, next up, do do do, which bands or artists do you listen to? I think we kind of basically went over that. I don't know if, Sam, I don't know if you named quite as many bands or artists, but I think I kind of said the ones I like American rejects, ACDC, Toby Keith, Alan Jackson, George Strait, you know, Luke Bryan, Chris Ledoux, stuff like that. Um, Billy Joel, shout out, Alan, uh, Weird Al Yankovic. But uh, Simeon, you want to shout out some bands or artists? I mean, obviously, <laughs> it can't be an episode of Dial H if I don't shout out Willie. Yeah, I'm about to say. Yeah, Willie you got to have a Willie Carlisle. Uh, I think of all the acts that I've seen live, I think Willie does one of the best live performances, just like really involves the crowd. Um, he's got a lot of soul, a lot of heart in all of his songs. So really impressed every time i see him it's extremely enjoyable every time i see him uh ken pomeroy was playing with him last time and then before that uh, i actually saw and found out about willie by going to an amigo the devil concert amigo the devil not for everybody I'm not gonna pretend like it's meant to be but uh definitely some good songs some like really solid songs some little um out there kind of songs which that's like my my typical kind of thing and I won't say my my favorite artist of all time because uh, it's murder folk music. And if you're not into it, I would rather you not like find one of the songs that they sing because 
man, uh, it can be a little jarring if you're not prepared for that kind of genre. Um, but those are probably like my three favorite right now. Uh, I of course have like some just like classics, like uh, Sixto Rodriguez. Did like some, uh, I think that was late '80s kind of stuff. And um, man, yeah, there's there's a ton of stuff that I could like shout out. Cher- Sarah Jickling from, uh, I think she's from Canada. She's like a smaller artist in Canada, but she does like some really interesting music stuff. Just kind of like I wouldn't say like out there, but it's a uh, interesting composition. So I've enjoyed that, but no, I, I kind of just bop around. I really like finding small, like quote unquote, undiscovered artists. Obviously like every artist that I find is usually already like tied to a label or something, but I like finding like smaller artists that I can't hear on the radio. The, it's like my, my one goal is to hear something that I wouldn't be able to hear on the radio usually. Oh, that's pretty cool. I mean, that's fair. Hey, you did a good job. I didn't know a single name that you said yeah. <laughs> outside of hearing it from you before. That's right. You know. <laughs> uh, Hipster strikes again. Oh, geez. Oh, gosh. And then uh, Malcolm saying he suggests two Japanese bands. He's about to. Anyways, do you have any foreign bands or artists that you recommend? I recommend uh, Chocolate Disco. They are... So a lot of playlists I also listen to on Spotify are the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, whatever playlists. My favorite playlist is, of course, Part 7, because that's the best part. Fight me, whatever. Uh, then Part 6 has the second best playlist, and then Part 3, I would say, has the third best playlist. In my opinion, in my opinion. Um, and that's just saying all of the song references or band references slash artist references chooses one of their songs to then be represented in the playlist. And Part 7... There is a character named Chocolate Disco from the band Chocolate Disco from the song, believe it or not, called Chocolate Disco. It makes it's all in Japanese and I don't speak or understand Japanese, but they just say Chocolate Disco a bunch of times, which what I mean, what does that mean? You know, I even fully understanding the word chocolate and the word disco. What does it mean to have a chocolate disco? You know, but it's a fun, I don't know, it's a fun romp. So that would probably be one of the few to only foreign artists I could recommend unless any of the people I've said before weren't from America, in which case I guess I recommend them. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I named one Canadian artist, I guess. Um, There we go. I think the only other Heilung, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but um, there's a Danish folk music band. And you've probably, I feel like some people have seen them because they're, I wouldn't say like mainstream, but like three thirty eight point eight million views on one of their videos. I feel like that's, that's pretty okay, popular. I mean, that's pretty that's big, pretty right? That's pretty good. Um, but yeah, it's H-E-I-L-U-N-G. And they are a experimental folk music band made up of members from Denmark, Norway, and Germany. But they, uh, they don like, uh, like kind of druidic outfits a lot of like antlers and Uh, hoods and stuff stuff like that yeah uh don't know what any of the words are but music's pretty cool so nice i will say i forgot to shout this out before but probably the most unknown band that i know about i don't even know if they still make music is free beer is the name of the band and they have some great songs the only one i'll recommend is fine time i really enjoy it it's very country stuff but uh yeah check out free beer that's my one and only probably deep cut that i can maybe offer to the show i'll also say i haven't listened to them in like a while but they are still on my playlist popping around uh the beards out of adelaide uh australia hey hey, there you go Uh, shout out international international one they're literally they all of their songs are about beards. Um, uh, sorry, not like related. Three albums. Not relatable to me. I'm sure no. more of our listeners can find it relatable. <laughs> no, it's not yeah, super not. relatable, but it is hilarious how many songs a single band can make about just beards and like how they they just keep going. And like, yeah, it's wild. You just listen to that, Simi, and just go like, yeah, man. Heck yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, man. Yeah. These guys, they get it. <laughs> It does itch sometime. I do like putting my beard oil in and combing out my beard. Yeah, yeah I man. have thought about making a beard accessory store. That's wild. 
Yeah. And then Malcolm recommends some Japanese bands. There's Scandal and Band-Aid, like he just said, that he's going to the rock concert Scandal. And then he also recommends Love Bites and Baby Metal. I feel like Malcolm's mentioned Baby Metal before because that seems familiar to me I've, somehow. I've seen clips of Baby Metal, and I know like Rob okay. Zombie. There was like a... Oh. Not like an interview, but like uh, Rob Zombie like said something about them, like how cool they were or something. I don't remember. But I've listened to them a few times. It, I mean, if you were into metal music, I feel like it's not uh, it's not like the niche level of metal that like some people really like. It's not like Norwegian black metal or something. Oh, sure. That like some people dig, but uh, it is it is quality metal music, and it's funny because it's three small little ladies in my opinion. That is kind of funny. I don't that know if they're cute. I don't know how old they are, but I yeah I assume they're they're they just look small, so I'm assuming they're young. Ha. Huh. And then Malcolm says, uh, which of these bands do you like to try? Uh, probably Band-Aid. I love a good name pun. That That's probably the one I would be leaning towards, to- tossing up on Spotify, giving a few songs a listen. I love a good pun. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean, I'll probably try out. I'll probably like pick up a couple songs of each of them. I, I genuinely, I've listened to some of Baby Metal, but I've never listened to like a full song of theirs. So why not? Yeah. I'll, I'll copy these down, Roman old Spotify, see what I get. There you go, right on. Now, moving on to Discord, where people on our Patreon asked us some questions. If you want to join the Patreon, there's never been a better time than right now. And you might be thinking, Calder, you say that stuff all the time. You plug the Patreon all the time. I'm literally hitting fast forward 30 seconds, 15 seconds right now. But hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me tell you why. Now is a great time. This weekend... 100% for real, no cap, full stop. I will be sending out three months worth of Patreon rewards to all sorts of people. People that have been there for three months, yes, we'll be getting the three months rewards. People that are brand new will be getting their one month reward, et cetera, et cetera. But also, if you join at the $25 tier or higher, you will get a shirt, a dope shirt, a shirt of art made by Antonio Clark that we have had the pleasure of showing off on a few live streams where it's the shirt I'm actually wearing right now and wore two clicks today. Because it's just so dope. The Cap Wolf shirt, where it's the Cap Wolf sculpt, where it's Captain America, werewolf, on a motorcycle. But then it has a big old Hulk looking kind of miffed in a sidecar. This is, of course, a joke that is the idea that it's like people always play a legacy Hulk with Cap Wolf. And in my mind, how do you pilot Cap Wolf? You don't get to pilot him. Instead, he's just letting you pop out the sidecar, punch somebody, pop back on, in my opinion. Because it's like, how are you piloting a dude? That dude's already got a pilot. Same thing. Who's piloting Blade? It's Blade. That's who's driving the motorcycle. So unless it's also Blade that pops out and stabs somebody, then you're just you're riding side saddle, bro. In my opinion. In my opinion. So thought of this cool concept. Antonio Clark was able to bring it to life. The shirt is hilarious. The shirt is awesome. It's got Cap Wolf. It's got Hulk on it. I think more shirts like this that are just fun hero clicks tactics that most people just pretty much all universally agree is like, yep, that's, that's the way it's played. You know, I think that's awesome. I think it's fun. So if you join the $25 tier or higher, you will get the shirt shout out Brandon Bruner for joining at the $50 tier G O A T that spells goat shout out Brandon, dude. Thank you so much for the support and all the other Patreon members actually really quickly. Let me go ahead, look them up here and shout them out as well because we had quite a few people join once they saw how dope these shirts are you know uh some people became free members that doesn't matter shout out dylan casabom shout out shout out shout out became a member as well love seeing that stuff yeah guys seriously thank you so much for your support it means so much to us we love being able to make cool stuff it like paid for the design concept printing of all these shirts and now we get to give them out to you it's really cool pays for like a lot of design stuff or whatever making the channel better you know being able to go to events all this stuff it's been so fun we bought all these cool new lights stands microphones it's just making dial h better baby so thank you so much for the support and also it was a really cool avenue for us to just give you cool stuff so we send out all the action tokens that we might start up doing stickers again we'll have to see um i personally really want to make pins that has almost always been shot down when i've asked people if how many people were interested in making pins and it's like less than 10 so let me have an excuse to make pins please but anyways doesn't have to but seriously 
great time to join the Patreon. I'm also going to be giving away a ton of our Disney Plus next phase stuff. None of the chases, but a lot of the super rares, rares, and everything we pulled. Uh, this is going to be basically pre-release next phase stuff. So if you want to join the Patreon right now, go ahead, do that. Get in the giveaway. That'll be this Friday, giving all that cool stuff away. As well as, if you recently saw, I made a trade post on a few different websites. Uh, anything that doesn't sell is also just getting given away. And, and there's some pretty neat stuff in there, some super rares from Notorious, some other cool stuff. So we're also giving away Guardians holiday calendar and an Invincible and an Iron Man Hall of Armor. There's all sorts of cool giveaway stuff, guys. Check out the Patreon. Support us. That's enough Patreon rant. I'm sure people skipped through it. And now here we are at listener questions from Discord. Wesley R. asks, if WizKids stopped making hero clicks today... Okay, first off, nightmare, 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 nightmare. <laughs> Thank you, Wesley, for that. What would you do with your collection? Would you continue to play with what you have with your local friends? Would you keep a few favorites for decoration and get rid of the rest? Would you seek out a new company to breathe new life into the game? Uh, I don't know how we'd try to find a new company. It'd be like, hey, can you guys make this, please? Uh, I don't know if that would work. I will say this, though. He says, like, would you try to, like, just get rid of your collection? I would honestly, if HeroClix said we're never going to make any more, I would probably go and buy. Yeah. Try to finally collect all of the HeroClix. That I'm like, yeah, well, that, that's what, that would be the point where I'm like, all right, time to finish every set that I've ever like, yeah. collected. Like, uh, or honestly. Least, maybe not like that far, but I would definitely start picking stuff up because to like the second point, would you continue to play with what you have? As long as other people would show up, I would keep playing with what oh, I 100%. had. Yeah. 100%. Um, and I think if if WizKids just suddenly was, like, no longer there, that would open up the floodgates of, like, we just design the game. Or, like, not design the game. We Ooh, make some customs. That, that's make, big in HeroScape. Yeah. If you we, guys we don't know this. We custom stuff, and we, we, like, make the rules to fit what exactly yeah. we want them to be. And then we just keep playing that way. Yeah. I think that would be great. Like, there are so many, quote-unquote, dead games that still have major followings there's a star wars card game that a hero host player i know plays in every year at gen con that has like custom card sets that has whatever stuff and like the game died in 2002 you know what i mean like insane there's so many games like heroescape died in like 2010 2007 like they quit making new stuff for heroescape there is a strong presence of people that still play heroescape and make custom cards and use hero clicks for which honestly makes me feel like you guys please just play hero clicks honestly uh but whatever and they make custom cards for HeroScape. like the most fun i ever had playing HeroScape was when i finally got introduced of it which was like six years after it died technically you know and i went to a ton of different gaming conventions and played HeroScape a ton so even when a game quote unquote like dies there's still a strong fan base and i think hero clicks has one of those a really strong fan base or even if it went like belly up or whatever and there weren't any more hero clicks that's to me that's like all right well time to finally buy everything because all the people that were only in it for whatever you know i won't say anything but if there are people are gonna be like whatever mass exodus right selling their collections all this other stuff that's when it's like lowball time baby oh you're getting out of the game the game's dead perfect uh what can i pick up your collection for you know if you're not gonna play it anymore that's where i'm just like i'll own everything yeah i love i love this game i will say if a local scene did specifically die I would still probably try and buy everything because like you, I, Ian, like whoever else, me and my friends can still play. And it would honestly be really fun to do, dare I say, Thursday Throwdown again and <laughs> play through every set, but in real life. Like actual, um, yeah, physical pieces. Like actually. Um, but I would probably then start leaning more into other games that I like. I would probably give Marvel Crisis Protocol a try and then instantly hate it because I have to paint everything and I hate painting. Um so I don't know if any miniatures game could fill the hero clicks void, but I would probably start playing Marvel Champions more and just start going to like that would be my new every weekend, whatever, go to a venue and play a game would be Marvel Champions in the darkest of dark timelines where I actually do start playing Ma ugh, uh, Madge, ugh can't say it, I'm going to throw up the MTG game. If I ever actually start playing that and like, you know, they make, they're going to make a Marvel set. They have an evil dead set, etc. Like they have some of my favorite properties. I may start playing that and then instantly hate it for the people that play it, but we'll see, you know, never say never. Um, I would basically just try and Yeah. I'd probably find some other game that is a heavy Marvel esque game or something along those lines to kind of like fill 
the clicks void. That would at least be the traveling to events and checking things out type of stuff. I feel like the same way. Yeah. Scary thought. Thank you, Wesley, for yeah. inviting us to that apocalyptic future. I will say, if the apocalypse does ever happen, endless entertainment. Owning all the hero clicks in ever that have ever been made, apocalypse happens. I'm never bored. You know, <laughs> honestly, but hero clicks. Uh, Tyler M then asks, "Do you think we will get more trick arrows in future sets? Possibly a green arrow, boxing glove arrow? Yeah, that makes sense to me. Honestly, yeah." You could use the exact same arrow sculpt. It's like a generic enough arrow, right? Where then you just, the cards are all just different. So yeah. since it's just the card, you could just make a different set of arrows. I don't know if they would try to make them different so they can't be played with the Marvel arrows or the DC arrows or whatever. But I could see like a comic book Hawkeye gets more comic booky arrows versus the DC, like no DC, the Disney Plus stuff. Or Green Arrow gets his boxing glove arrow or whatever other arrows he makes you know like sure i could see us getting more trick arrows in the future same i yeah i think that'd be not only would it be cool it would make too much sense not to do hopefully yeah super easy inclusion in my opinion luke 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 asks jumping off of tyler's question who would be your picks for some currently modern legal figures that could have really benefited from the marksman keyword and trick arrows I think Hawkeye Hawkeye, like, obviously comes to mind if they would have had the marksman keyword and could have trick arrows. Holy smokes. Double trick arrow you in one turn. Uh, he hit you with a two dangerous and big arrow or electrical arrow. Like, dang. So I think they would be really good. We see that these Elsas are getting marksmen. Maybe if the Wheels of Vengeance Elsas also had marksmen, sure. The uh, old man Hawkeye, I think he'd probably benefit, of course, from trick arrows. Just like any archer any, I guess, Punisher, people like that, that would be a marksman. You could justify it. Yeah. Winter Soldier, stuff like that. Yeah. It is kind of sad that the keyword popped in too late for a whole bunch of people. Like, I mean, retroactively, if we could keyword somebody with like a new keyword, uh, it would make plenty of sense for a lot of people. So, yeah. Oh. Next up, Alex the Enchanter asks, so I love the way you approached his queen's gambit question last week i'm gonna ask it again but more specifically what i'm looking for aka we did not take the bait correctly we yeah. we biffed we biffed the bait the we didn't, with the question if you made a tv show about a hero clicks champion's journey to glory who would it be and how would you make it more dramatic i feel like saul is the top pick for a hero clicks champion's journey to victory i think him being an international champion is really cool yeah. talking with him and Richie about how much they practiced, how they were both going through like school, like in college and all this stuff for like in really important stuff. I want to say it was like PhD kind of stuff. I'm sorry. I, I forget. I'm sorry. Um, but like, like managing it going for like really intense, like college school stuff. And then also all the practice they had. And then of course they have to come from Mexico to then America. I think that's really cool. Um, and obviously, I think Isaac is another just top contender where it's like the yeah. the boy wonder-esque prodigy type. Following him like through stuff. the years up to. Yeah. The I think staying if I were ever to make a TV show, I mean, to follow like the Queen's Gambit like show where she starts off as like a young child and she's kind of like a prodigy and then yeah. comes like young adult, starts entering tournaments. I feel like doing the Isaac story where he was 14 when he won the first world championship, right? just insane yeah i think that, 14 sounds right yeah that's seems crazy now like <laughs> especially seeing him at tournaments now and being like well he's, he's not a kid anymore but it's like yeah the first time he won the world championship he was 14 years old so um i think that'd be a great story i think that's succinct to like you know it would be uh narratively it wouldn't be like super complicated kind of like expected what like is going to happen but um I, I don't even know if there was like any upsets really along the way. I don't. I didn't follow it until what was it, 2019 when he won. So, yeah, that's fair. And ladies and gentlemen, that is all our questions for this week. Hopefully, you enjoyed the podcast. Hopefully, you got some fun, some joy out of it. It was a fun time. And if you want to maybe hoard up on your collection for the potential potential future that wesley predicts of Terrifying. hero clicks stop being made 
you want to hoard up all the hero clicks you can before that sad, sad dystopian future, uh, you should check out CoolStuffInc.com. You can find cool stuff in stock every day, including the latest HeroClix singles and sealed products. And when you use code DIAL5, you can save 5% off all of your purchases there. But if you want to go direct to the source, maybe check out that uh, Dial H collection. You can go to shop.wizkids.com, and there you can use code DIALH10 to save 10% off of your orders. It does not include iconics, pre-orders, specialty figures, and some collection stuff, but... Most other things. I don't know. I haven't tested it out myself. It's been a <laughs> while since I've actually... I think the last time I tested it out was uh, to get some gingerbread men. So I, I should probably re-amp, see what all I can get with it. Absolutely. And ladies and gentlemen, for any Heroes content and for all the latest videos, podcasts, news, and more, make sure you dial H. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional... Hero clicks now. Ooh. <laughs> Not going there. That's how numbers work. Over oh, yeah, six yeah, people work. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. Well, the rest of this case uh, doesn't matter at all. I'm from Canada.